Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this morning I'm going to start you off with the official, most good-natured guy that I know about of the Digital Asset Investor channel, and that is Ray Fuentes from Link2. Hey, what's going on, family and friends? Ray Fuentes here, Community Manager at Link2, dropping in with some spicy Ripple details, just in time for refilling our reservoir with pre-IPO Ripple offerings available for investing on our Link2 platform today. For those of you that are unaware, our loyal Link2 customer and Team Apollo member, the Digital Asset Investor, AKA DAI, recently interviewed John Deaton, the attorney representing 60,000 XRP holders globally, all who are bound together by one of, if not the greatest cases in our modern history. Attorney John Deaton stated, the SEC versus Ripple case was dead upon arrival, and that the filing of the lawsuit itself may have been the goal all along. But why? Why would the SEC want to slow down Ripple, the fintech giant whose mission is to solve one of the greatest problems facing our current financial system today? Ripple's proprietary technology frees up trillions of dollars locked up in Nostros Vostros accounts globally, providing on-demand liquidity to their customers and participants within their network. Now, before I get any more amped or deeper in the weeds with Ripple's products and services, let's listen to what attorney John Deaton had to say to DAI. When you sue the executives is when you believe they've committed fraud. Yeah. Why would you file it against them when you know you can't? If you know you can't win, then maybe you're not trying to win. Maybe the filing of the lawsuit itself was the goal. Maybe that was the end. Maybe that was everything, right? File the case against them. Think about this. Joseph Brunfest, who is very, very loyal to the SEC, he believes in it as an institution. He said, in the history of the SEC, there had never been an exodus of so many leaders in the SEC leaving after filing such a significant lawsuit. He called it a mass exodus. Think about it. Clayton left. Hinman left. Mark Berger, the director of enforcement who helped write this complaint left. The director of trading and markets left. All of these people left. As they're walking out the door, they slapped the most significant SEC enforcement action in modern history. So while the SEC is experiencing a mass exodus, Ripple is beefing up their staff with A-list executives like Rosie Rios, formerly our 43rd U.S. Treasurer, and Eric Van Mittenberg, formerly holding senior positions with numerous Fortune 500 companies. Don't even get me started with Ripple's CTO, David Schwartz, the legend that's developed encrypted cloud storage and enterprise messaging systems for who? The NSA. You go, David. Right now, Ripple has about 550 employees on staff and is actively recruiting for another 126 positions just for their U.S. operations alone. For a company that's under so much scrutiny due to the SEC lawsuit, it sure does make me want to look beneath the surface. Wink, wink. <laughs> now, if, if you don't believe me, go check for yourself. The job postings are listed on LinkedIn. And when you're done doing your own research, hop on over to Link2's website, www.link2.com. Sign up, become an accredited investor, and start investing in the world's top three IPO companies today. Don't wait. Get on your horse. Take a hold of your financial destiny. Thank you very much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. I sure do love you, Mucho. Hope you have a great day. See ya. Okay, so they apparently they were they added a bunch of Ripple equity onto the platform uh, this either today or yesterday. And so, if you will go, uh, uh, if it's something you're interested in. You can, I'll put the link to the to link to in the top of the description of this video, so check it out. All right, now our old buddy Anthony Pompliano, the Bitcoin Maxi, was on CNBC this morning because they won't talk about any other digital asset besides Bitcoin or Ethereum, as usual, so here he goes. When you look at 
holders and their base price, meaning when people got in on average, you look at where we are now, we're at 38 bucks, you know, 38,000 bucks is what I should say. Um, what, what, what's, the, what's the basis for the average investor in Bitcoin right now? Yeah, so there's something called realized price, which basically looks at the I'm last time that Bitcoin forward traded this, hands. You can calculate each individual Bitcoin, what, what was that crap. price at. And I'm going to kind of get fast to, forward this uh, to a base the holder last price. part. Uh, I think the bigger uh, question right now is just what is the United States going to do with Bitcoin? Uh, you start to see more and more politicians talking about it. And I think that one of the pieces that we have to start talking about is the United States needs to embrace Bitcoin. It's now a national security issue, right? On the off chance, 0.01. Oh, no, 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 no. I think XRP is a national security issue. Well, Bitcoin may be a national security issue in a bad way. XRP is a national security issue as in you might want to be in control of that because it's going to be good for the United States of America. Bitcoin can't do anything except be a store of value. And Anthony Pompliano knows it. But that's not what I wanted you to hear out of this. Listen to what he says in a minute. Percent chance that the U.S. dollar ends up not being a global reserve currency used by every single country in the world. Uh, the next best option is for the United States to be the biggest player, the largest holder of a decentralized digital currency that no one controls. And right now, the United States doesn't have uh, kind of a single strategy here. We now have about 30 percent of hash rate in the U.S., uh, but I think we need to get very serious about what is our Bitcoin strategy as a nation state? How are we going to be a leader here? Because ultimately, Bitcoin is an American technology from an ethos standpoint. So now, I don't know what that means. He, he, he just said um, Bitcoin is old, an American technology from an ethos standpoint. What does that even mean? Is he saying it's, it's an American technology? Because he cannot know that. Remember. The, everything that Bitcoin represents to these people, these Bitcoin maxi types, everything that it represents depends on not knowing who it is, not knowing who Satoshi Nakamoto is. The second that you know who Satoshi Nakamoto is, Bitcoin loses everything that it's supposed to be about because now it becomes centralized. Now you know who it is. And the th that's the one thing that cannot happen. So. If he says it's an American technology, my question is, how does he know? Okay? Because he can't know. If he does know, then this becomes the biggest financial scandal in the history of finance. If he doesn't know, he doesn't know if it's American. He doesn't know if it's Chinese. He doesn't know if it's Russian. He doesn't know if it's sponsored by some terrorist organization. He doesn't know that. That's the reason on this channel, you don't hear it in anywhere else on crypto, but on this channel and a, maybe a few XRP related channels, you'll hear the truth. And that is, either they know or they don't know. If they don't know, it makes no sense. Because are you telling me the, the U, United States or any other country is going to build their financial system around something where they don't know who or what country or what group of bad guys created it? No way. No how. Not going to happen. But it, it, that leads you to that they do know. If they do know, then this is the biggest lie, even bigger than the Ethereum free pass lie. If they do know, and, and they're investing based on the fact that they do know, then Bitcoin would be the biggest financial lie in the history and scandal in the history of all of finance. It's one of those two. It's not anywhere in the middle. They either know or they don't know. But Bitcoin will never make any sense at all if they don't know. I don't believe that they don't know, though. Now, let's go into a little bit of, of what we do know, some things that have happened, okay? The first is from ProCoinNews.com, who is the official sponsor of the Digital Asset Investor Hunting and Fishing Club. And they put on the, on the front of their website today, Russia may use cryptocurrency to avoid sanctions. Well... There's a lot of things that I remember because I've been here for a while. I remember from the last few years, and I'm going to show them to you. First is this. Well, this isn't from yesterday. Russia and its billionaires may have a potential new tool to evade U.S. and European sanctions, cryptocurrencies. Okay? Well, a lot of you weren't around, and I made the comment, I'm buying XRP and X XLM and gold. Uh, but a lot of people, you people were not around. This is a guy named Dan Pena. Hold on, I'm going to have to answer this this phone real quick. Hello? Hey, hey I'm on, I'm in the middle of doing a video. Can I call you right back? All right. 
Okay, so that was my wife. Um, you see, do you see, folks, the kind of trouble I put myself in a position to get into? I'll actually tell my wife I'll call her back so that you, the audience, can hear what's going on. <laughs> so let's start this over. Um, this is Dan Pena, who is a, um, I won't call him a motivational speaker. He's a lot more colorful than that. He drops F-bombs while he, while he tells people how it is. He's kind of an interesting character. Anyway, listen to what he said. This is back, I think, in around 2018-19. You know who's behind Bitcoin? Putin. It's a Ruski conspiracy to fuck up the American economy and the world. It's a long-range plan he started seven, eight years ago. He's going to see the demise of the Western financial world while he's still the head of Russia. He's going, to live, he's going to be there long enough. And, he, and, he, and he's already hacked into the brains of all the morons. You know who's behind Bitcoin? Okay. So then there's this. Do you remember Max Kaiser? This is Max Kaiser right here. Playing something. He's the probably the preeminent Bitcoin maxi. Right now. Okay, here's a $10 bill. This is garbage. This is garbage. Your people in South Africa, you have your RAN, right? That's Iran going to zero. That's going to zero. This is going to zero too. Euros are going to zero. The yen's going to zero. The Chinese currency is going to zero. It's all going to zero against Bitcoin. You know now, you know, believe it or not, I agree with what he's saying here in terms of I think it's shameful what the United States and all these countries have done to destroy our currencies and all. I, I agree with him. I agree with him on a lot of things he says. But there is one thing that's always bothered me, and it's this. He works for Russia Today, and you might say, oh, well, that just because it's called Russia Today doesn't mean it's run by Russia. Now, this is the guy who talks about bit against the backdrop of that Dan Pena video I just played you. Um, this is straight from the Wikipedia um, page. RT is a, is a brand of TV Novosti, an autonomous nonprofit organization founded by Russian state-owned news agency RIA no Novosti. The Russian government, headed by Prime Minister Vladimir Putin, included Anno Tivo Novosti on its list of core organizations of strategic importance to Russia. You don't have to take my word for it. What I just read to you, I had shortened, but it's right here on the RT Wikipedia page if you want to go read it for yourself. So that's kind of bothersome when you when you think about it from that standpoint. Then you factor this kind of thing in too. This, you know, we've seen on the news the last 24 hours a lot about, oh, well, the United States is, we, you know, we, can, we always have the option that we'll, We'll just disconnect Russia from SWIFT. Well, folks, this is from back in Septem September of 2019. These people have been working on their end around on, on the SWIFT system for a long time. This is from Jim Rickards. Russia and Iran launched a secure payment system that bypasses SWIFT and U.S. sanctions. I warned about this in my books, Road to Ruin, and in 2016 and Aftermath 2019. Easy to include China, Turkey, and others when the time comes. U.S. Treasury asleep at the switch. So the question is, has the time come, folks? All right. And this is the article that he's tweeting from back in 2019. Then there was this. This is... This guy is on Russia Today as well. Step two is what's being discussed now, which is the, the payment processing system. So really what they're competing with is the SWIFT bank system, right? So right now, if you're sending money overseas from a U.S. bank, you have to use, or any Western country, you use that SWIFT system that is set up in Belgium. Um, and that prevents money laundering in theory and all that kind of thing. But what the BRICS nations are doing is saying, well, we don't need to use the SWIFT system because we don't want to be subjected again to U.S. sanctions because if the U.S. is sanctioning you, you can't move money using that SWIFT system. Mm -hmm. So what's really interesting is, number one, they're creating a payment system that would go around SWIFT. But how do you do that when you have five major countries that all have their own currencies? And one of the ways they're doing that is by using possibly cryptocurrency to do that. That would mm -hmm. translate their currencies into a single cryptocurrency that is then used through the system and then re... Um, 
formulated, I guess, mm -hmm. when it gets into their country, back into their, their own personal um, uh, currency. So mm -hmm. essentially you're taking currency from one, sending it through as a cryptocurrency, and then back on the other end, into in transforming it into another currency. And that allows them, again, to get around this SWIFT system in a way uh, mm -hmm. that no one had really thought about in the past because crypto already has all of those things in place. Mm -hmm. Now, Russia in particular, They've been moving away from the U.S. dollar. In fact, mm -hmm. in the last five years, Russia actually cut out almost half of its trade payments in U.S. currency right. from 92 percent to about 50 percent. So what does this say about its relationship, if any, with the West? Well, I think it says that, the, again, that Russia specifically really started pushing this after 2014, right? Because mm -hmm. in 2014, uh, the U.S. started hitting Moscow with sanctions, mm -hmm. and they wanted to punish. And remember how this works. Sanctions are issued against individual countries. They're also issued against leaders in those countries or wealthy people in those countries. Mm -hmm. And so when leaders in those countries and wealthy people in those countries start getting hit with sanctions, you have a choice. You can either go along with this and comply, or you can say, let's create a system that no longer gives you leverage over us. Well, one thing that the U.S. is doing a very poor job of right now mm -hmm. is recognizing that it's not just Russia or just China, but there are five major nations and dozens of smaller nations that are very excited about the idea of no longer being under U.S. dominance when it comes to currency, and we're not doing anything about it. At this point, the U.S. is resisting almost, on almost every level any push to change the way the system is currently. <laughs> If they, I just don't buy it. Um, I'm going to skip across this. I was just going to mention the John Deaton video where I interviewed him has now got, let's see here, 164,000 views because, and I said, the SEC, the Chris Larson, Brad Garlinghouse ripple cases are dead on arrival. Um, 134,000 views and counting because the people now know the SEC filed this case as a weapon knowing they couldn't win. When did this agency stop working for the people? Um, and then this is interesting, Biden's executive order on crypto. Remember, it's not just Biden's executive order, it's Biden's national security executive order. Remember those words, um, it's been delayed. Um, then there was this SEC is now, now remember Elon Musk said that he's got evidence and, and he's going to finish the fight with the SEC. Just a day later, SEC probes trading by Elon Musk and his brother. So you can see how this operation works. And uh, John Deaton asks, Gary, wh why not investigate JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs over manipulation of metal, the metals market? Why not protect... Investors from fraud and manipulation. Did Elizabeth Warren ask you to look into Elon Musk? Now that he's paid more in taxes than anyone in history, does she need new material? <laughs> Great point. And then we've got the cyber stuff still going. Breaking news. Canada's cyber spy agency is warning power companies, banks, and other critical elements of Canada's infrastructure to increase cyber defenses. Alerts all over the world now. Um, then there's this from Gold Telegraph. Physical gold bullion is independent of any external system once it's in your vaults. Many nations have, have brought their gold home the last 10 years. It is starting to make sense why. I told you yesterday that I had opened myself a Glint Pay account, which I, I'll put this in the description of this video too. But I opened this and actually this morning my money had arrived, so I bought into gold. I now have my, my I have a Glint card. I have my gold sitting there and I'm able to literally set the settings so that when I go to a restaurant tonight, it will spend gold instead of spending dollars. How about them apples? And this, by the way, this is the CEO of Glint. Check this out. Well, if I can hit the, let me see where I am on this at the 55 second mark. I wanted you to hear what he said here. This is because this is, this is Standard, ground, so to speak. Wrong, too far. Hold on. The 80 year olds, because I think people saw the last financial crisis that actually banks aren't necessarily a safe deposit of money and also money depreciates over time. So, for instance, a, a cheeseburger when I was born cost 51 cents. Now it costs $3.55. If you, if you, do, bought, where you go. If, you <laughs> uh, if you bought it with gold, 
Uh, it would have cost uh, one gram of gold would have bought you two burgers in 1971, and now it'll buy you 12. Wow. So gold, of course, holds its value. So it's a far, far superior form of money we're bringing to the world, really. Kind of money's new standard, so to speak. So to kind of break it down for those that maybe aren't familiar with how this card works, so is it gold back from someone puts in money and then it gets converted into gold, or they can just use the deposits in their debit card account to trade gold if they wanted to? Yeah, so you download the app, you, in, you install it, you register, and then you deposit funds into your account with a debit card or an ACH bank transfer. And once you've done that, you can buy some gold. You can buy as little as one cent's worth or millions of dollars worth. So we're democratizing gold as well. That's so right. That is what they're doing, democratizing gold. And today, they got a big investment from one of the big, uh, huge uh, gold miners. It's called Sibanye Stillwater um, is, is the company. And I'm reading from, they actually, actually have a press release. It says, I'm, uh, Jason Cousins, who's the CEO of Glint, he says, I'm delighted to be able to announce this significant investment from Saban, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, Sabanye Stillwater, that will enable Glint to considerably accelerate our planned growth and strategic development. What we're building here at Glint is special. We are experiencing rapid but sustained growth to deliver our vision of a global gold-based alternative to banking, payments, and money. And we have both the capability and opportunity to build a significantly scalable financial ecosystem connected to but outside of the existing banking and cryptocurrency systems, folks. That is huge. And then the CEO of Sabanye Stillwater, he says, this partnership with Glint provides a digital and high, highly regulated platform backed by physical gold under the supervision of a world-class regulator in Switzerland. This is a game changer, folks. If you look, it, it, for me, cryptocurrency and and gold are are a natural. It's like um, it's like uh, what's a good example? Um, it's like ice cream and chocolate syrup. <laughs> they go together perfectly. Um, and what's happening in our world is that there's a there is a meshing of the cryptocurrency and the gold world. Because make no mistake, folks. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Gold, I will keep saying it, gold is God's money, and it and God's money is never going anywhere. There's a reason that all of these central banks over the last 10, 15 years have been accumulating gold while some mysterious person puts out Bitcoin, person or entity or government puts out Bitcoin and screams from the rooftops with a marketing program, go to Bitcoin, go to Bitcoin, it's the new gold. There's a reason for that. I buy gold, XRP, and XLM, and that's the fact, Jack. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. Here's what I want you to tell your friends and family right here. If Anthony Pompliano somehow knows that Bitcoin is an American technology, the question is, how does he know? And if he does know... Is that not the largest financial scandal in history? If he or anybody around him knows, it's bigger than the Ethereum free pass. And I think that these people do know because I don't think they'd be trying to market this and build a financial system around it unless they did know. The problem is, if that means they did know, they've got themselves a big, huge problem on their hands.